Well, hey everybody, John Rutland here, and this is my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling's Best of Super Juniors 26 Night 10 event, the last night of all block action. So pretty much if you're not within like two to four points of the leader, you're pretty much fucked because really you can only play spoiler at that point. But, well, that's a great thing about these round robin tournaments is a lot of cool victories, surprise victories, and everything can happen. That's what happened in last year's tournament and then the G1, <coughs> which were fabulous tournaments. And I do want to apologize for the lateness of this review. I worked early yesterday and then reviewed Double or Nothing and was too tired because I had to work earlier today. So that's why I'm just getting around to it now this afternoon. But thank you guys for the great positive feedback. I really do appreciate it. And also, I do want to say really quickly, I will be reviewing the rest of the tournament. I will be reviewing the finals, obviously, and Dominion Osaka. The Kazuna Road cards that are going to be the live shows, I may review those. I may not. I might actually just take that off and just not review anything from New Japan until the G1 special in Dallas, which I'm very, very excited for. Actually, it's the, ki it's the kick off the tournament, which is going to be very interesting. So that's just a little bit of an update. I will update you guys further if I change my mind, maybe at the Best of Super Juniors final review. But let's get on with it with Kevin Kelly, Chris Charlton, and Juice Robinson on commentary. Until the end of the semi-main, then the Time's Up video played. I don't know who it is. Probably David Finley. Who the fuck knows? And he's yelling, saying, you know, you bring your ass or whatever, you dumb son of a bitch, and I'm going to beat you. Uh, that's pretty much it. And bring your ass on the 5th, and I will beat it. So, we get Ren Rita and Taguchi uh, ch chiming in for the beginning of block of the B-block action. And we get Ren Rita with some great groundwork and some great leg focus. Narita really has shined a lot in this tournament. His matches with Will Ospreay and Bandito have been fantastic. <laughs> and this one wasn't bad. Uh, Taguchi does come back. He does eventually end up getting a nice ankle lock on and does get the tap out. But not a bad showing at all. Certainly quite good. Dragon Lee did earn two points because Takamichinoku hurt his knee in the previous night against Shingo. So, but, you know, if somebody can't participate, then their opponent wins via forfeit. So, Dragon Lee's still behind two guys in, you know, in the A block field. But winning two points and being able to rest his body <coughs> certainly, you know, never hurts. Even though Dragon Lee's a hell of a competitor. And best wishes, of course, to Takamichinoku. Hopefully he can recover in time for the rest of his tournament. If not, his opponents win by forfeit. It, you know, he he's in his like early 40s. He did a whole lot of high flying when he was younger, so maybe <clears throat> having the more ground-based style isn't a bad idea. But again, hopefully he recovers. Hopefully he can be part of the Dominion card, maybe in a tag match or something. But best wishes and a speedy recovery to Takamichinoku. Then we get Kanemaru versus Jonathan Gresham. It wasn't bad. Jonathan Gresham has not had gotten to have very long matches here. He did have some nice groundwork. And then, of course, Kanemaru taking over with some great groundwork and legwork. Um, the roll around, the tumbleweed, you know, kind of thing or whatever. This, uh, you know, roll, the rolling pins and stuff like that. And Kanemaru was dizzy. Gresham was dizzy. That was a pretty funny spot. There was a ref bump. It looked like we were going to get the Centauri surprise, the alcohol spray, which apparently it is legit alcohol. I mean, that's saying something, but whatever. Maybe the announcers are just selling it. But in the end, <coughs> Gresham stops that because Kanemaru is going to use the whole bottle because apparently that's what it takes to knock out an octopus. But speaking of which, the octopus stretch gets locked on Kanemaru, and Kanemaru taps out, and that's fine. Gresham gets a couple more points. He's had a decent tournament. I just wish, again, his matches could have been a little longer. Back to B-Block action. Doki versus Rocky Romero. Romero having that fan-fucking-tastic match against ELP. And do not worry, I will mention ELP a little bit later. <laughs> Doki attacks for the bell, of course. Grounds Rocky. I mean, come on. You know, anytime you got, you know, anybody that's kind of associated with anybody in Suzuki-Goon, you're going to get an attack before the bell. Um, he grounds Rocky. He focuses on the knee. He's focusing on the knee since that's been kind of, you know, a sticking point for Rocky here <laughs> in this tournament. Some great submissions. A, a great, you know gory stretch like a Guerrero special and then kind of almost into a Widow's Peak variation by Doki. That was pretty goddamn cool, but that was just for two. <clears throat> and then nice arm breaker by Rocky soon after, like, you know, after some big moves and he gets to tap out Doki tapping out again. I mean, whatever. I mean, hey, it's cool. I just, I'm just a bit surprised they bring in Doki kind of not necessarily with a world of hype, but like he's so unknown and everything. He's already tapped out three times in this tournament. Um, but it is what it is. He, if he was brought in to put people over, cool. And Rocky getting another big victory. No, he's not going to win the tournament at all. Not even close. But still, <clears throat> he, he could end up playing spoiler. And then, well, I mean, actually, he would only end up probably with 10 points if he, gained, if he wins his last two matches. But still, that'd be a pretty damn good showing. And he gets to face Bushi. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm definitely here for that. <clears throat> well, I will be because I currently live here and I would have to watch it at home. But then we get... A block action, Marty Skrull versus Teton. Yes, I'm still laughing at the word Teton. I'm sorry, I'm immature. 
Um, of course, Marty Skrull, uh, you know, franked, uh, flanked by Brody, by Brody King. I don't know how you'd be franked by Brody King unless he's selling hot dogs. That would be weird. This review's gone a little odd. <laughs> Uh, Teton just showing off, doing some great work. Of course, Skrull starts grounding him because he's like, well, shit, this guy's flying around. Let me ground him. And then he went for he went for uh, Teton's mask, of course, you know, loosening it, making it, you know, where it's on his mind, like, as opposed to on his head and like, oh, crap, my mask is loose. I got to watch that. And then um, he dives on Brody soon after Teton does. <clears throat> of course, you get Brody King getting involved for a little bit to get a nice strike exchange. A package DDT, but that's just for two. But then Black Plague, one, two, three. So Teton loses. Skrull having a good showing. Teton's had some good performances here, but he's just one of those guys that's clearly just there to get people over. Get a couple victories and that's it. <laughs> Which makes sense. He's not full-time in New Japan. He just makes his shots when he can because they have a working relationship with CMLO. And then we get B-Block action, Bandito versus Bushi. Decent. I, I enjoyed this between two mass wrestlers. It was nice. I mean, Bushi has really come on pretty strong here. <clears throat> it's a shame he lost his first couple matches. Because otherwise he would have been in the lead here. He Actually, actually, I think he would have. Had he won all his matches, he would have been in the lead. That would have been something. Um, but yeah, get a cool dive by Bushi. Some good groundwork. Bandito comes back with diving and showing off some great strength. That guy is a perfect combination of speed and power. Really, really good. <clears throat> DDT on the apron by Bushi, which, as we know, is the hardest part of the ring. And Bushi also has the best masks. And also those DDTs on the apron. Stop that. Please, get some help. Seriously, your neck is going to be on fire. Hopefully not. That would be a little bit odd. <clears throat> but Japanese, Mexican destroyer, can, you know, Canadian style. If that made any sense to you, it made more sense than it did to me. But then um, we then get, <clears throat> you know, a variation of MX. One, two, three, so MX pins Bandito. Bushi gets the victory. Bushi's having some pretty good showings here. No, he's not going to win, but damn if he's not having some great showings. And then we're flying right along with A-Block action. Shingo versus Tiger Mask. Not bad, not great. Um, this was a bit of a unique mix. You did have Tiger Mask <clears throat> hit some good kicks, but then, um, you know, clothesline, clothesline the ropes like uh, only, you know, Shingo can. Kind of hitting, kind of hitting uh, Tiger with his knee and his gut. So Tiger's kind of hunched over and everything. Shingo's kind of kicking him, trying to go for stuff. But then Tiger Mask, maybe playing a little possum, tries to get an arm uh, breaker on him. <clears throat> that was pretty fun. And really, really nice stuff. Really, you know, a lot of great arm focus by Tiger and just did enjoy that. But uh, Shingo comes back, does end up, you know, grounding Tiger, hits the last of the dragons. One, two, three, and Shingo remains undefeated. Shingo is going to go undefeated in this tournament unless Taiji Ishimori beats him. And I think they're facing off on the final night, <clears throat> the final night of A Block action, which will be in the 31st. That's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see that. We then get ELP versus Yo. A good match. I. It told a good story that led into the next match that, I mean, I get where they're going with it, but it kind of took away from <clears throat> what was a really good match. We then get attacked before the bell, of course, you know, Barry... You know, ELP is just like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to use the barricades. I'm just going to beat whatever I can, you know, beat Yo with whatever I can. Even a shoe. He took up one of the cameraman's shoes, actually one of the shoes that was under the ring, and threw the shoe at him. <clears throat> because, of course, he did. Uh, ELP grounded Yo. Yo did have he did have his comeback. Hitting some good moves. There was actually a lot of great momentum switches here. I really did enjoy this. Nice airplane spin, you know. <clears throat> but Yo only got pinned for two. Um, there was at one point where ELP gets the undisputed British Cruiserweight Championship, you know, from Rev Pro. He, he gets, you know, because he's a champion, he gets it and is trying to use it. And then the referee's like, hey, wait a second. Why are you doing this? I'm looking right at you. See, that they make the referees look kind of stupid sometimes, but the referee <clears throat> grabs the title. And then, you know, ELP is trying for something, but he gets caught in Yo's beautiful bridging, you know, pin. And one, two, three. Yo gets the victory. That's the second loss that ELP has had. So ELP and Osprey are tied. And if Osprey beats Robbie Eagles in the next match, Osprey takes the lead. And that's important because ELP already beat Osprey. So if they're tied by the time this thing, by the time you know this block ends, you know, by it's like if they're tied at like you know twelve points, fourteen points, or whatever, by the end of you know the last night. ELP gets the victory, and ELP goes on to the finals because he owns that tiebreaker. That's the great thing about tournaments. It's so simple, it makes sense. But anyway, <laughs> Eagles versus uh, Osprey. Robbie Eagles versus Will Osprey. Robbie Eagles, great to see live, by the way, if you get a chance. Um, great one-upping. I mean, you, 
this this match was fucking smooth. Great legs, great leg submissions and focus. Great strikes. Osprey being ridiculous, but still selling his knee and all that. That was pretty cool. Osprey does hit this one beautiful dive over the top. It, you really, you really can't, you can't watch an Osprey match and really find any holes in it. Maybe just in his neck because he keeps landing on his motherfucking neck. Come on, Osprey, we don't want you to end up like dynamite, dear God. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that because they're British. It's because of their styles. I mean, even though I would say Osprey was a better athlete. And I'm opening myself into hate in the, comment, in the comments. But we get back in the ring. Poison Rana. <clears throat> slice bread on the apron. Again, hardest part of the ring. ELP comes to ringside. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen. Somebody says, somebody asked me if it was Chase. No, no, ELP has talent. I kid, I kid. Chase actually has talent in the ring. I just don't think he's very interesting. <clears throat> um, ELP, though. Does end up factoring into this after a turbo backpack for two, a ref bump, ELP hits uh, Osprey with a chair in his knee while Osprey tries to spring off the ropes for an os cutter. And then um, <coughs> Will ends up tapping to the um, to the Ron Miller special, you know, the leg lock, the rolling leg lock that uh, Robbie Eagles has been using and Will taps. So, okay, they're tied still. Now, this is fun. It's funny because Robbie Eagles also is at 10 points. <coughs> uh, Taguchi is at 10 points. So you have right now, and I'm looking at the point totals here, even Bushi's at eight points. I mean, he's not going to get, he's not going to win. I mean, he, there's no way he's going to, you know, win out and win the block, but you have four guys tied at 10 points, according to what I'm looking at. Now, maybe I wrote this shit down wrong, but the B block's a lot more, you know, tied together, you know, <clears throat> than a block, which is pretty much down to two fucking guys. I mean, three, if you count Dragon Lee, but Dragon Lee ain't going to win it. And then we get to, so I liked what they did. They're obviously saying up where ELP and Osprey are not going to win the tournament. <clears throat> or even if they get to the finals, they're not going to win. And they're going to maybe set up a match at Dominion, which I would actually be all for. I think that would be a tremendous match. Or they set it up for the G1 special in Dallas, which I think would be pretty nice. <clears throat> but neither guy is going to win the tournament. I think it's pretty obvious it's going to be Shingo. Um, unless they pull a swerve. They pull a swerve last year. I didn't think they'd have Hiromu win it. I'm glad they did. But then we get Taiji Ishimori uh, versus Sho. Good match. I get why they did what they did. But, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. But it just, there was no doubt, given the fact that Ishimori had to stay, not neck and neck, but like just right behind Shingo, that he was going to win. It took a little of the drama out of this, even though Sho did have a good showing. Show did focus on Ishimori's arm. There was some good stuff like that. And some nice neck focus. <laughs> Heavy chops by Ishimori. Show just the amazing strength that he has. Of course, tai Taiji just freaking diving like crazy. That guy, little fire plug, can dive like crazy. Amazing. Show uh, showing off with some clotheslines. No, not an intentional wordplay. <clears throat> Last ride with the knees for two. And then we get submission switches. Shock arrow. He, you know, Osprey, or not Osprey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Osprey comes out, hits the move, and disqualifies both of them. No. Uh, show with Shock Arrow. And he goes forward. <coughs> Ishimori flips up, hits Bloody Cross right out of there. It's smooth as silk. One, two, three. And then Ishimori cuts a promo basically saying that he is going to beat Shingo. And if he beats Shingo and they end up tied, then Ishimori ends up <coughs> winning A block and gets into the final. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do here with the tournament uh, going forward. So, as for the reviews, and I'm going to close this by saying this, the 29th and the 30th, <clears throat> I may end up doing those as a dual review Thursday morning, um, due to the fact that I haven't been sleeping all that well. The 31st, I will probably have that review up. Uh, that will be a solo review, so will the 3rd, because they take place that many days apart. 31st will probably be up sometime Friday, more, or Friday afternoon or evening, <clears throat> depending. And then... The third will probably be up sometime Monday afternoon due to the fact that I have to work. So I'll probably watch most of it go to work because I work early Mondays. And then I will review the rest of, or I'll watch the rest of it when I get home and then review it. So anyway, thank you guys so much for the great uh, for the great feedback. I really do appreciate it. And I will update you guys on what other New Japan content I'll be reviewing. So agree, disagree with what I said. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I am Jarmuthlin. I will see you soon.